Hey Jessica, so today I'm going to be doing a note taking episode which has been really requested on this channel for a while now. But I decided to upload an extra video this week because it's a little bit different and pretty special. In fact, it's a collaboration with another study tips guru on YouTube, Thomas Frank. So he's going to be sharing with you the top tips for how to decide what kind of notes to take in class and make sure that they're really well set out and organised. So if you find today's video helpful, then show me and Thomas some love and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Thomas. Hello there. So in this video, I want to talk about how you can start getting more out of your notes. And I've got a few different things I want to cover. Number one, I want to show you a sampling of the different note taking systems out there. In particular, I'm going to show you three of the more effective ones. Number two, we're going to talk a little bit about the debate between paper and computerized notes and see if any system is better than the other. And then lastly, I've got a few different tips that you can use to review your notes more effectively because the entire point of note taking is getting information out of your brain, getting those concepts and ideas and facts pulled out and put into a reliable external system. But that's not the only point. That's not where it ends because you have to also be able to recall that information on a test. Now, before we get too deep into the details, I want to highlight the importance of that word recall because there are in fact two different ways of bringing previously learned information out of your memory. There's recall, but there's also recognition. Now, recognition is when there's a trigger or a cue that uh, triggers a memory to come forth. Like say you read a magazine five years ago and you're flipping through it again and now you're recognizing the ads and pictures you saw before and you're saying yes I did see those but if you can't recall what's going to be on the next page before you flip over to it then you can't actually recall that information you're not able to pull it out of your memory without an explicit trigger and that's exactly what you need to do in a test unfortunately you need repeated exposure and repeated uh, working and wrangling with information to effectively recall it over the long term. And this is because your brain is actually very good at deleting information or more accurately at letting the patterns that aren't used very often between neurons fade over time and letting the connections from other neural areas kind of fade as well. The only way to keep those neural connections strong is to use the information frequently, either through repeated exposure or through that recall, which is generally more effective. Now to understand this a little bit better, we need to go back about 130 years to 1885, when a German psychologist named Herman Ebbinghaus created a paper called On Memory. Well, at least that's the English translation. I'm not even going to try with the original German. But this was actually landmark research in the study of memory. Beforehand, it had just been basically philosophers guessing as to the nature of memory. And to be honest, this research wasn't perfect, not least of all because Herman Ebbinghaus himself was the only participant. There was no external validation. Nonetheless, it was a landmark study in the history of memory research, which kind of kicked off an explosion of further study that still goes on to this day. And one of the most important parts of his paper was something called the forgetting curve, which showed that memory decays exponentially. And in fact, within 24 hours on average of you learning something, your brain will forget about 40% of it. And that's not very useful when you need to recall it on a test three months down the line. Now, luckily, you can increase your brain's ability to effectively recall the information you learn by putting in your own words and interacting with it in different ways, and that is exactly where your notes come in. So to put this in the context of note taking, we can really break down the process into two different steps. Step number one is to capture the information in the most effective way possible, and step number two is to review that information later on in an efficient manner. When it comes to capturing your notes, you have a ton of different options and systems and methodologies people will tell you about, but I just want to go over three of the more effective ones in this video. Number one is called the outline method. Now, this is a really simple method of taking notes. Essentially, you're just creating a bullet list on your paper or on your computer, and you want to keep the top level ideas to the leftmost of the paper and then start drilling down and nesting your bullets when you have details to add. Now, I found this method to be the most useful one for me when I was in super information dense classes where it was basically just like a dump truck load of terms and definitions I had to learn and there weren't as many big ideas that I could really connect to the small little details. The second method I want to talk about is expressly designed to help you review your notes more effectively and it's called the Cornell method. Now this method was created by Walter Pock who was fittingly a professor at Cornell University and essentially it's a method where you divide your paper into three different sections. On the right side you have your normal notes and a lot of people will usually use the outline method for taking notes here but over in the left column you start to add questions about what you're learning. Now, some people will try to use the questions to sort of highlight the main points of what they took in the right column, and other people will just write questions about what they were confused about in the lecture. 
Either way is effective because it does help you review the information. Now down in the bottom of the paper, you have a little summary box where you can summarize the main ideas and most important parts of the lecture. And I wanna pause here for a second to give you a really effective tip if you're gonna use this method. And that is to sit down for a few minutes right after class before you even leave the lecture hall and do the summary there. Like we said earlier, you're gonna forget about 40% of what you learned within 24 hours. So you wanna give your brain the best chance to encode the main ideas and the things that are most likely to show up on the test. Now, the last style of note taking I wanna go over here is called the flow method, which was developed by a blogger named Scott Young, though I'm sure many other people have used it in the past because it's really kind of hard to describe this method. Essentially what you're trying to do is create a picture of how your brain really understands the information. It's much more holistic and less rigid than other systems. And essentially what you wanna do is draw diagrams and draw arrows connecting concepts to other concepts, linking things you learn to things you wrote down earlier. And you're kind of just creating this network of ideas like a spider web. As opposed to the outline method, which I like to use in those really term heavy classes where there weren't as many concepts, the flow method is my personal method of choice for most of the note taking I do these days when I'm trying to learn a lot of heavy concepts. Now, while those three systems are all effective, they're definitely not the only options you have. And in fact, in another video, I covered two additional note taking systems. So if you're curious about your other options, you can click the video right there and check it out. Next up, I wanna tackle the common question of whether you should take your notes on paper or on a computer. Now, personally, I think that both have their place and both can be effective, but I wanna point you to the results of a study that was done last year, which showed that students who take their notes on laptops tend to write a lot more, but they were unfortunately able to recall and comprehend less of the information. And the problem here is that students who can type really fast are tempted to start recording the content of the lecture verbatim. They're essentially turning themselves into court stenographers, just writing everything down and the syntax of the information, the auditory signals being translated into text is all consuming in their minds and they're not leaving any room in their brain to actually ponder the concepts and ideas and how they all connect. And this is all the important information. If you don't do it in class, you're essentially creating more work for yourself later on because You've just basically given yourself a court record that you have to go through for the first time again and expose yourself to those ideas and concepts. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't take notes on your laptop. I personally find taking notes on my laptop to be pretty effective at times, but I just want you to keep this in mind. Be cognizant of this potential problem and make sure you're really taking time to think about the concepts and make sure you understand them fully rather than just making sure you have them written down. With that being said, I wanna round this video out with a couple of different tips you can use to review your notes more effectively when it comes time to study. And the first one is to study using what's called the question answer method. And to do this, you wanna take your notes and translate the main points and definitions into questions that you can then quiz yourself on later. This is forcing your brain to recall the information, which is a much more effective way of encoding it for the long term than just repeatedly exposing yourself to it, even if it's stuff that you personally wrote. My second tip is to structure the review you do for each class so that it happens at longer and longer and longer intervals. And this is called spaced repetition. Essentially, your brain will remember something best if it's forced to recall it right before it's about to forget it. If you take a look at this updated version of the forgetting curve, you can see that repeated exposure to information helps to bring the recall back up and starts to make those exponential decays of memories less extreme, but spacing that out at non-linear intervals helps the most. So that about wraps it up for this video about note-taking. Hopefully you found something useful that you can use in your classes going forward. And at this point in the video, I'm gonna head out of here and give the video back over to Jess. So I hope you found today's tips helpful for how to take notes in class. And if you did, then be sure to give it a thumbs up to show Thomas and I some love. And also make sure that you subscribe both to my channel and Thomas's channel if you guys are ready to take your study skills to the next level because we upload weekly study tips and we both are here to help you out with all of your study needs. Thanks so much for watching and have a happy and productive week, Jessica. Bye.